many many studies show that if we based on different kind of the survey, different kind of census, or different kind of the uh, uh, other these kind of small in-depth uh, studies, the on the total fertility in China should be lower as lower as than 1.5, but the government. Uh, uh, and many scholars did not believe this kind of the very low fertility. So the government officially figure is that China's total fertility rate is 1.8. But if you based on all these kind of the, uh, service, that's, it's much lower than 1.5. So this is a debate is still going on. <coughs> and the, uh, this uh, situation uh, is affecting the government's decision whether China should change its populism policy or not. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the general fertility pattern over the last uh, uh, half a century. Of course, this kind of the region, uh, this, this kind of fertility, it's not uh, homogeneously across the whole China. Uh, in China, uh, actually, we have the many different, for example, in Shanghai, the total fertility rate has been as low as 0 0.7 over the last more than 10 years. But it's remained as 3.5 in Tibet, in, uh, in uh, Xinjiang, in some other part of China. So that's, uh, you, uh, you will find this kind of the, uh, very largely differential fertility across China, across the rural and urban areas. So this definitely this kind of regional pattern, regional diversity of the fertility, mainly the caused by the social economic development. So in the coast area and in the urban area, relatively as uh, developed and people's uh, reproductive behavior are much more <coughs> modern uh, compared to the people live in the rural areas and in the remote areas. Furthermore, this kind of regional diversity in fertility is heavily affected by the China's differential in the uh, family planning policy. Well, now, usually when the, when we call the China's family planning program, we call the one child policy. But actually, China never implemented the pure one child policy. So this current population policy actually is uh, shaped in the year uh, 1984 or 1983. <coughs> Since then, over the last 25 years, the main principle or main, uh, main uh, shape of this kind of re uh, family, regional family planning programs are remained unchanged over the last uh, 25 years. So generally general speaking, that's, we can divide into this kind of the policy into different uh, uh, components or categories. The first is one child policy. So this basically is uh, covered as all the urban residents and rural couples in a few provinces like that in uh, Jiangsu and in Sichuan province. So this, this uh, we call the one child policy area. So this covers about uh, the 36 percent of the Chinese total population. So this is a figure of the 2006. Yeah. Then we have the, for the majority of the rural population. So either they can have two children, uh, or they can win, win, uh, the, they can have the second child if the first one is a, is a girl. Then for the minority population, uh, there, is, uh, there is some kind of general uh, policy allowed the minority population to have two or three children on average. Then there is, for the Tibet population, there is no numerical regulations for <coughs> Tibet population. So that's the uh, highly decentralized policy formation and the policy implementation in China. So if everyone in China follows the government policy, then the total fertility rate in China, or we call it the policy fertility rate, should be 1.5 uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, that in the year 19, uh, 1990, the policy total fertility rate should be 1.62. But because over the last 20 years, more and more people become urban residents, and more and more people uh, should follow the one child policy, uh, that's the regulations. So now the policy allowed every Chinese to have 1.5 kids. So it's, uh, sometimes one child policy is uh, is the term oversimplified terms, sometimes uh, misleading. But anyway, uh, we just use the term one child policy uh, here. But uh, you should bear in mind that there are differences uh, in the regional policies. Uh, then we know that the. Uh, 
China's population in the future will continue to grow. Although in China at this moment we have already, the fertility rate is already at a very low level. Uh, here I show two of these kind of the assumptions. When you said total fertility rate remained at the current level, official level, 1.8. So in that case, China's total population will continue to increase up to the peak will be the uh, 1.47 billion. So it's about the, uh, 100, uh, the 120 million more Chinese will be born if we base on the current then, if the policy was relaxed, so it means on average Chinese couple can have two children for every Chinese couple, then total Chinese population will reach about the 1.6 billion. So, and the, the peak year of the Chinese population growth, uh, if the two children per family scenario, so the Chinese population will continue to grow up to the year 2050 then stabilized, then decline. But if we maintain the current fertility rate, then it's, uh, we will reach the peak of the Chinese population around the year 2035, then stabilize it, then to decline. So if the, uh, if according, but of course there are another kind of the projections said, okay, if we based on the 1.5 fertility, then total Chinese population will reach uh, something like the 1.4, 1.4 billion. Uh, then stop grow, then the stabilized. In what year? Uh, then will be the in the, around the 2025. Yeah, so if we assume that the total fertility rate is 1.5. But of course, if we, the 1.5, we based on that projections, 300 years later, the total Chinese population will only, uh, will be only 75 million total Chinese. So that's, that's some kind of uh, scenario, uh, projection scenario. Then the, here is, the, I show you the government population target. It means by the year 2010, within 1.36 billion, now it's definitely we can reach that target. By the year 2020, around 1.45 billion. So that's, uh, that, that's the government target. So that's what I, uh, uh, I want to, uh, you know that the general population situation. Then in addition to this kind of population size and population growth, Chinese population actually is uh, the aging structure, age, age structure of Chinese population is changing very rapidly over the last uh, uh, half a century. Here we can see that the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the age pyramid in China so th this is a PDF version, so this cannot be uh, animated. But actually, all, my original PPT can use the animation. So uh, actually, we can see that uh, in the 1950s, China's age structure is uh, very typical, uh, the pyramid-like, because the bottom is very big, the, the top is very small. But uh, with the years to, passing, uh, to pass, the Chinese po population become older and older. Uh, this kind of very elderly population now in China uh, become really become a big issue. We can see the uh, changes in age structure. You see, in the 1970s, about 40% of Chinese are younger than 15 years old. So, but nowadays, we less than 20% of Chinese are younger than 15 years old. Then on the other hand, we see the rapid increase of the elderly population. So in that case, we can see that uh, over the last uh, uh, 30 or 40 years, Chinese really, uh, the abundant labor force, uh, abundant young labor force in China, we, it's the case over the last 40 years. But this was no longer the case in the next 10 to 20 years. So Chinese population becomes rapidly aging. Not only the entire population is aging, but also the labor force is rapidly aging. We can see that's the, the uh, <coughs> uh, aging trend in China. So this, is, in general, we can say at this moment in China, we have the elderly population, uh, more than uh, 100 million Chinese are, are older than 65 years old. And if we use the 60 years as a criteria for the population aging, then at this